Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Claudia Arul, thanks for having me today. Um, you guys may have seen me before in a couple of other presentations with Comunidad 220. Uh, my name is Jacob. I'm with Pacific Equity and Loans, and we're a hard money lender. From my understanding, we have kind of a, a, a wide variety of experience levels today. Um, some of you guys may be looking to do your first deal. Others may be looking to do your fifth deal. So today in my presentation, we've got some of the basics and some of the uh, just overall things that you guys are going to need to know along your investing career. Recording in progress. We still good? Yeah, we're still good. Perfect. Okay. Give me just a second here. Awesome. Okay. So to kick things off, a little bit more about Pacific Equity and Loans. So we are a hard money lender based out of Tacoma, Washington. So we're right in your guys' backyard and we're local. Um, our specialty as a lender, we specialize in low down loans. You may have heard or you may have seen it on the flyers. We can go as low as 5%. So I haven't seen any other lenders who are able to get as low as 5%. For the new people- in the Jacob, room, sorry, can you, can you get closer to your computer just so the audio is better? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, here, I can, I can take a kneel right here. So um, is this better? Yeah, that's better. Awesome. So what is hard money for the new people in the room? Hard money is a form of non-conventional financing. So we're not just like your traditional banks. We don't look at the same documents and we don't have the same process. It's great if you're, you know, if you have low credit or if you're self-employed, um, or as you may have heard, you know, hard money is the king of financing for short-term projects, just like flips. Uh, today for the presentation, we're gonna look at a couple things. We're gonna look at a little bit more in depth why use hard money over other forms of financing. We're gonna take a look at a, an actual deal that we originated back in July. Um, it's gonna be a quick high level overview just to kind of get you guys familiar with what the numbers will look like. And then the main chunk of this presentation, what I have for you guys today is the stages as an investor. You know, when you kick off your investing career, it's really important to know where you're going what each stage looks like so you can be prepared and have the most success. Then we'll talk about how Peel Pacific Equity and Loans, how our programs and perks are available for each of those stages. So it doesn't matter what your experience level is, we have you covered. And then we're gonna finish up with taking the first step. How are you gonna walk out of this room today being a stronger investor than who you were when you walked in first? So. Perfect. So why use hard money? The first and foremost, yeah, it is investor friendly underwriting. What this means is there are less requirements and it is much easier to qualify. We're not going to ask for W2s, nothing income related. It's going to be a lot less stocks. Also, if you do go with conventional financing, not all the properties are going to qualify for that financing, right? Some may be too distressed or it might just not qualify for conventional financing, which is where hard money is going to step in. Overall, it's faster closing and we have a smoother process. The industry standard is two to three weeks. We sit at two weeks, two weeks to close a deal that you bring to me, right? You have a PSA in hand. You say, hey, Jacob, let's get this financed. Two weeks to close. There's very few docs. Um, we look at a scope of work, maybe your HOI insurance, right? Uh, your GC information, things like that, but just basic docs to get us familiar with the project and you as a borrower, and then we're good to go. And of course, there's less money down. So Pacific has programs that span from 15% all the way down to five. And if you look at your flyers, there's a couple different benefits and reasons why we have them broken up into those different programs, and we can dive into those later. Here's a quick deal analysis. This is, like I said, a deal we originated in July out of Olympia, Washington. The purchase, 360, and the rehab is 35. So your all-in cost is a little under 400. The ARV is 630, they got a great deal on this property, and the interest rate is 12%. If you're new to hard money, you might think 12% is a little high, but here's why it doesn't matter. Down payment, we're looking at 32,250, that's 5%, plus your third party fees, you know, your um, HOI premium, your taxes, your title and escrow fees. So their cash to close was 32,000 on a deal that had an all in cost of 400 grand. So typically a lender might ask you for 15, 20% and it's gonna look nothing like this. It's gonna look much higher. The net profit for this deal that the borrower is facing 
is 116,000 with an ROI of almost 300%. And remember, this is a short-term deal, right? Six months for a flip, get in, uh, get in and get out quick. So to have uh, these profit margins with these, uh, with this ROI is uh, a great opportunity, a great way to demonstrate the 5% down program. Right, so here we are into the main chunk of the presentation. Like I said earlier, it's really important to know where you are right now and what's next and what does it look like, right? So you're gonna be prepared. Overall, I've broken it down into five stages uh, for, for an investor. Here are the five stages. First, planning. If you have not done your first deal yet, that is the stage that you're in. That's where you're just doing your homework, doing your due diligence and getting grounded in the industry altogether. Then you finally get that first deal. It's exciting, you get a rush, right? A lot of nerves, but it's that first deal that's gonna be the first stepping stone in the rest of your investment career. After that, you've completed it successfully, you've made some money, and now you're gonna start getting comfortable, right? Building some momentum, maybe your second, third, fourth, fifth deal, that's what the stage looks like. Once you're there, the next thing to do, stage four, this is a hard stage, but it's developing a niche and scaling, right? Where you pick a specialty you become the best at it and no one can stop you and then after that all is said and done you've hit your goals you've done what you want to do originally now you're going to be in stage five looking for you know maybe a higher purpose and we're going to go through each of these stages a little bit more in depth so here's stage one planning during this stage i like to think there are five main topics you need to address the first is going to be research Real estate, project management, economics, and finances, right? Real estate, that's the no-brainer, right? That's the, the housing, doing the flip, the market, understanding the, you know, the design of a flip, right? Those basic elements of real estate. Then you have project management. This is where you're working with contractors to get your budget scheduled, right? Having clear estimates for each line item, and most importantly, being able to stick to your timelines. Speed is the name of the game for flips, right? Quick in, quick out. So being able to stay on top of those deadlines that you have set are gonna be really important. Economics, zoom out, take a look at what the country's doing, right? What's the Fed rate doing? What's the mortgage rate doing, right? Um, the R word here, recession, right? What are people talking about right now? You need to know what the economic landscape looks like in the next you know, three to six to 24 months. And of course, the bottom line here is finances. You need to know how to manage your own finances, how to make sure that you're running numbers accordingly, right? And that you're going to walk away with the profit that you expected. Second, goals. Um, these are gonna be both personal and financial goals. You have to know where you're headed and you have to know what you want. Personal goals, maybe something like, hey, I don't wanna work my nine to five anymore, right? I don't wanna be a W2 employee anymore. I wanna have my own schedule, do what I want, when I want. Financial goals. Maybe that's you know setting out to make seven figures or six or seven figures next year, right? Depending on where you're at, um, whatever it is, how you plan to reach that goal is also going to be extremely important. Three, capital and financing. So one of my favorite quotes I actually learned from one of our borrowers, and it is, "It takes a village to build a village." And what that means is you can't be everyone in this whole investment career, right? You can't be the real estate agent. You can't be the GC. You can't be the lender. You can't be the wholesaler. You need other people in your corner um, that's going to help you along this journey. One of those is going to be a lender, right? Now, I can only speak for my, for my lending company, but the way I look at it is uh, when we do work with a borrower, it's not just we get a loan, we call it done, you know, we close and that's it. It's you get to know us, we get to know you, we get to know your goals, and we're going to help you get there. And at the end of the day, we have your back. Now, we can't help you. We can't really look out for you if we haven't established that relationship, haven't established that rapport, right? So starting with the pre-qualification process, starting that dialogue is really important before you get under contract on your first deal. Then there's networking. I mean, that's what you guys are here to do, right? Network and learn. And there's no better place than Community Dad 220. So the people to the left and right of you, these are people who have the same mindset as you, who think just like you. Maybe they're more experienced and you can approach them and say, hey, you know, it would be great if you could be a mentor of mine, right? So they can pass down that information. Or maybe the person, you know, you're with 
uh, they have the same experience level as you, and you guys want to take on a project together, right? Whatever it is, networking is going to be extremely important. In real estate, it's not so much about what you know, but it's about who you know. So having the, the right contacts and connections will really help you uh, throughout this investment career. And then finally, deals. None of these things matter if you don't have a deal to execute on, right? You have to figure out a way to apply this knowledge and that's gonna be with your deals. You need a pipeline. A pipeline is just a fancy word of a system for how you're gonna generate leads, how you're going to get your eyes on what's potentially your next project. Now, this could look like maybe you have 20 real estate agents that you're working with and they're looking for a deal for you and you tell them, hey, you find me a deal, I'll buy with you and I'll list with you, right? Creating a win-win situation. Or maybe you have an inbox full of just wholesale deal after wholesale deal, right? Off-market property after off-market property. And that's your way of sourcing deals. Regardless of what it looks like, you need some system for getting deals. So you've done the planning, you've done the research, and you're ready. You found your first deal, okay? Well, when you have this capital that's ready, there's a lot of ways you can invest in real estate, right? So here's what to look for in that first deal. When you're starting off, I heavily recommend the first thing you do is a flip. This is your best way to get your capital into something that's short term and get it back out along with the profit. You can buy a rental, right? Maybe a turnkey rental and you're thinking, hey, I'm not going to have to do as much work, but you're going to invest your money and you're not going to be able to get it back out for a long time. And that means you can't kick on another deal for quite a while, right? And we want to keep on taking as many products as we can um, and scaling over time. Depending on what your capital looks like, maybe you have 50, 60, $70,000 um, ready to be invested, you're going to want to look for a lower purchase price and low rehab costs, right? Around those numbers, I suggest something around the $300,000 range. You can find those, you know, maybe closer to Pierce and Thurston County. Now, when you're calculating, hey, I have this much capital, what's my purchasing power, right? You don't want them to be an exact match. Because what you're doing then is you're making your budget incredibly tight. And the second an expense goes above what it's supposed to, which I guarantee can happen, right? Um, you're going to be left with no capital and you're going to get stuck in the middle of the project. So you want to make sure that after your closing costs and after you're making your monthly interest payments, you're going to have money left over to deal with those unexpected expenses. The second half of the first deal I like to think is kind of the mindset side. So committing to your first deal can be scary, right? Maybe the capital that you've saved up, you've uh, saved up over a few years, right? And any real estate investment has risk along with it. So it's okay if, you know, it's, it's a little scary at first. In my opinion, you need to anticipate the difficulty, right? It's like a boxer who steps into a ring, right? A boxer is ready to get hit. So he's going to get hit and then he can throw a punch back, right? Now, imagine a boxer who steps into a ring who's not expecting to get hit. The first time he does get hit, and that hit will come eventually, he's going to be stunned. He's going to be off his game. He's going to not know what to do next, right? Same thing applies to you as an investor. When you step into the ring of real estate, you have to understand there's going to be obstacles and challenges uh, that come your way, right? And if you're not prepared for them, when they do hit, you're going to get thrown off your course, right? Whereas if you're ready for it, you're going to be able to take it in stride and move on to the next challenge. Finally. When you're getting into your first deal, there's a still a lot of unknowns. So it's okay, rely on the network, rely on the people that you've met today, you know, your connections, your partners, your mentors, and they're gonna be able to make sure that you get out of this successfully. Okay, great. You've done your first deal, you exited successfully, what's next? Here, I like to say you're in stage three of getting comfortable. Now imagine, you know, you have a snowy hillside and you have a little snowball at the top. That first deal is what sends that snowball starting to roll down, right? And as you roll down, this is you beginning to get more and more projects done. From there, as the snowball builds, right, that's you growing your network, right, your list of contacts and your experience level. So now you're more knowledgeable about real estate. As that snowball gets bigger and bigger, you're going to think, well, hey, flipping is great, especially in the beginning, right? but there's plenty of other investment opportunities in real estate. So one way, maybe you, know, maybe you wanna get into SFR rentals, 
one to four units, right? Maybe you want to buy a fourplex, fix it up, refi, and have it cash flowing. Maybe you want to get into true multifamily and you're dealing with five or more units. An alternative is short-term rental, short-term rentals, right? Airbnbs, Verbos, things like that. And then for my really ambitious uh, investors out there, if you want a higher return, right, you love the risk, land and ground up construction is going to be what's for you. It takes a lot more knowledge to pull off correctly, but hey, it's going to have a bigger payday in the end. So that's what stage three is looking like. You're comfortable here. All right. You've gotten the jitters out of the way and you're ready to look at other investing opportunities. Here we go to stage four. Like I said in the beginning, this one's a little bit tricky, right? This one's a bit hard to get right. And it's developing a niche and scaling. This is where you start to get big. First thing is take a deep breath, step back, reassess your goals, right? The person that made your goals in the beginning before you got that first deal is not the same person you are today. So with all of this experience that you've gained, right? You're going to have new knowledge. So you're going to want to make new goals. You're going to have a new perspective on the industry. Maybe you learned about STRs and their, their true, you know, profit potential. And you're like, Hey, that sounds great. Let's focus on short-term rentals, right? You're going to find a niche after we explore those different categories that we did in stage three, you're going to pick one, align your strategy with your new goals, right? Maybe you want to build an empire and buy the city. Great. You're going to get really, really good at flipping, right? Be the best at it. Be the, be the expert. Or maybe you want to retire early off of passive income. Okay, great. Then you're going to, you know, start acquiring rentals, uh, multifamilies, maybe even invest in a syndicate, right? With apartment building, something like that. Whatever your new goal is, you need to have a strategy that is a perfect match for it. From there, once you specialize, you're going to want to be the best. This means knowing the small details, right? Getting creative, making things work where in other people's eyes, it wouldn't have worked. If you can specialize and you can be the best at what you do, you're going to be unstoppable. So this is why I say finding a niche is so important. Also, if you're looking to make more money, right? You're going to have to work on larger scale projects. No one wants to do one to two flips a year and you know, no one's going to make it big that way. So maybe it's either buying apartment buildings, like I previously mentioned, or if you're a flipper and you really love flipping, maybe it's getting into, you know, luxury homes where you're buying at the seven figure price and selling to, you know, large upscale clients, something like that. Stage five. So you've done what you set out to do, right? The vision is complete. You've hit your goals and now you're living the life you want to. From there, you're going to want to make sure you have a dedicated team. Having, uh, you know, a lot of manpower in your corner is going to be important when you're working on multiple projects, you know, high dollar amounts, it's going to be best if you have people that you can delegate the, the work to, right? You want a community, you want a team that's going to be in your corner. You're going to continue doing these large scale product uh, projects when you're at this stage, but you're going to ask yourself what's next, right? This is where I see a lot of my investors uh, turn their focus to something else. For example, giving back to the community. One way, share your knowledge with others. Maybe you want to mentor less experienced investors, right? Just like when you were a less experienced investor, you made connections who helped you along the way, and maybe you want to give back, right? Kind of like what Claudio and Raul are doing with this, uh, you know, Communidad 220, being able to share knowledge with others. It's really, really important. You can also take on projects with a deeper meaning. For example, one of my clients, right, growing up, it was a, a tough neighborhood that he grew up in, right? So now uh, when he's an investor, he's successful, he's shifting his focus to developing low income housing, right? Making housing affordable for everyone. So something that's really personal to you. So those are the five stages. Before we move on, let's take a quick review. Stage one is planning. If you haven't done your first deal yet, that's where you're at. Stage two is getting that first deal done, right? Uh, going over all those first time obstacles, making sure that you're tough to deal with them and then exiting successfully. Stage three is going to be uh, getting comfortable, right? You're starting to get the repetitions down and you're starting to learn how the game is really played. Stage four, developing a niche, 
learning how to scale, that's what's going to make you big. And then stage five, you've accomplished your goals. Um, you've set out what you originally set out to do. And now you're going to look at something with a deeper meaning. So regardless of the stage that you're in, uh, Pacific, we designed our programs so we're able to help you regardless of what stage, right? If you're a first time flipper, if you haven't done any deals yet, or if you're on your 15th deal, it doesn't matter. We've got a, pro a program for you. Now, on our team, we've got experts, right? We are investors just like you. So we, we're not just some guys, you know, in a back room closet, crunching numbers all day, telling you, you know, your deal won't work. We're familiar with the process. We understand what it looks like from your perspective. So we're investors. We're going to make sure that, you know, the experience you get is one that's on your side. We're not here to butt heads. We're here to make you successful. We provide tools for success. This is how we stand out. For draws, uh, you might know with construction draws, you put in your money, right? You request a draw and your lender reimburses you. Well, the old school method is, uh, you know, you order an inspection. We uh, order an inspection report through a third party company. That inspector has to, you know, call you, set up an appointment. Now you're walking some person that you've never talked to before through this, um, you know, through your deal and they're evaluating you. They're evaluating how much work you've done. They send it back to their headquarters, it goes through quality control, and then it gets to us, and then we disperse money, right? That's an exhausting project. I was just, I, you know, I got tired just talking about it, right? With SiteWire, we're looking at cutting out all that noise. You're the inspector, you use the app on your phone, and you're the one taking pictures and submitting videos. From there, it goes straight to us, we evaluate the work done, and then within, you know, one to two days, we're dispersing money back to you so you can continue on your rehab project. It would be, you know, you get to the project in the morning, you submit the draw, the next day you have funds to continue buying material, continue paying your contractors and moving on in your project. As you've heard, we have one of the lowest down payment programs in Washington, 5% if you qualify, right? So that's a huge value add for our investors. It really, really allows them to scale and to be able to do more projects with less capital out of their pockets. For our repeat borrowers, like I said, this is a relationship business. We get to know you, you get to know us. So for borrowers who we get to know really well through projects, you know, time and time again, like Claudio and Raul, we get to see benefits headed their way. Lower interest rates, right? Your terms are going to come down. And then you also qualify for lower down programs. That 5% down program, we need at least three completed projects. Okay. So we'll start you at a down percentage. And as you continue working with us, we get to see your down payment drop, drop, and drop until you reach that 5%. We're, 20, we're available 24 seven. So if you call my number, you call the sales number, our main company line, right? We're gonna pick up. And for whatever reason, if we're unavailable to, uh, we'll always get back to you. So we're here to help make you successful if it's after hours on the weekends. We know that offers sometimes you find out a deal and you need to submit an offer within 24 hours. We get it, it's happened to us too. So we're here to make sure that we're not going to be the bottleneck for you missing a deal or, you know, not putting an offer in on time or not having numbers ready. And last, this is a point that I really like to stress, mutual success guarantee. So some lenders, right, they kind of lend, they want to take back the properties. For us, that's not how we're set up. If we have to take back the property, it hurts us too. So at the end of the day, we're looking out for your best interest. Our philosophy is that if you're successful, you're going to be able to continue doing projects, right? And then we're going to be able to continue doing business together. So by ensuring your success, we're ensuring a mutual success for us to continue working down the road. Now here is our fix and flip programs. Um, you guys should have been able to grab a flyer. If you haven't already, make sure you grab one before you head out. Here's a quick breakdown of our programs, and I'm not going to get too in depth into it. If you have specific questions, right, you can always call our line. But as you can see here, we have different programs broken up into the different down payment percentages, each with slightly different um, attributes, right? For the 5% down, disclaimer, right? We have our LTVs, we have our guidelines that we still need to adhere to. So not every project is going to be available for 5%. You bring me a deal, right? We'll go over the numbers and I'll be honest with you. I'll let you know what the down payment's looking like, if this is gonna be a good deal for you to profit on or not. 
So again, I'm always going to be looking out for your better interest. Again, if you have any specific questions, I believe we can do a Q&A after the presentation, or if your question doesn't get answered, we can always talk on the phone. So taking the first steps, how are we going to be a stronger uh, investor when you leave this room today, right? No one wants to be a weak investor. That looks like no network, no financing, no deals, right? On the other hand, a strong investor, you guys have Communidad 220 at your backs, right? You have a strong network, strong group around you. You're pre-qualified with Peel. I can get working on how to make you more successful. And of course, you have a strong deal pipeline. This is something I'm excited to announce. We're actually working on a deal pipeline for our borrowers. We have connections with wholesalers, with agents, with other sources, sources for deals, and we're sending out newsletters to our pre-qualified borrowers. So that's getting ready to launch soon. So if you don't want to miss out on what could be your next deal, right, all it takes is getting pre-qualified, and that's a quick five-minute loan application. That's all it really is. And with that, I want to thank you guys for listening to me. Um, I want to thank Claudio and Raul for hosting this great event. Um, and then if you have any questions, uh, I think we're available to do a, a short Q&A, if I'm correct. Well, thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, thank you. Awesome, awesome. Do we have any, uh, any questions from the crowd that we want to go over? So we have phone number, you know, how contact Pacific Equity, right? You have the phone number, yes. email, is the best way you have uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, you have something like that? Website, I believe those social medias are available. Um, if not, shoot me a quick email to say, hey, this is, you know, so-and-so -so from uh, Community.220 and I can get you a lot more information. But if you're curious about, you know, learning more about us, look up Pacific Equity and Loans, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, whatever it is, and then you'll be able to find us there. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect. Jacob, thank you so much. And then I'm really appreciate it. All the information, that's perfect, that's good. So do you hear me? Yeah, all good, no questions? No questions, I think everything that's perfect. I go talk with the people a little bit in Spanish and I go clarify everything, but I say thank you so much. That's I know you're not here you. with us, I but you are the opportunity. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Jake. All right, 